Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new season of super efficient build guides for Satisfactory Update 4. As a little forewarning, because Satisfactory is in early access, these recipes are subject to balancing and change in future updates, so if there are any discrepancies, that may be the reason why. Today we're go going to be covering nuclear power and more importantly nuclear power generation with no nuclear waste. This is a late game build guide and will require you to have unlocked particle enrichment as we will be using the particle accelerator. So if you're not that far into the game you may want to store your nuclear waste as we will be getting rid of it further down the line. Nuclear power is daunting to most, so in the effort to make this as easy as possible, we're going to be limiting ourselves to 17 machines inside a 36 wide by 17 deep grid. You will also have to provide various items for this, including electromagnetic control rods, steel beams and heat sinks. And do not worry if you're struggling with aluminium or aluminium. I intend to do an aluminium efficiency build guide soon, so remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. For this build you will need a minimum of 4 and up to a total of 22 power shards, 120 uranium per minute, 72 concrete, 90 sulfuric acid, 3.6 encased industrial beams, 7.8 electromagnetic control rods, 30 silica, 18 nitric acid, 5.4 steel beams and 3 heat sinks per minute. Alongside this you will also need enough resources for 6 power plants, 1 particle accelerator, 4 manufacturers, 4 blenders, 1 assembler, 1 awesome sink and finally a minimum of 6 water extractors. This build will in total generate 15,000 megawatts of power per minute with zero waste and this setup was greatly helped by Human Imperfect who drafted up a setup in an Excel spreadsheet for me, so special thanks to him. Note though that I do try my best to make this setup as clear as possible in this video, but I will also attach a written guide to our website satisfactorytips.com, you can find the link in the description if you find that easier to understand. Once you have the 36 by 17 grid set up, our first job is to place our 6 nuclear power plants. I've built these every 5 foundations from the top right hand of the grid, with the inputs and outputs covering a single foundation. This will give you enough room to run the water input and the waste output down the side of the building. I've also made sure that I have one and a half foundation space available at the back of the build, but you can make this more compact or spread out as you wish. Once these are placed, run the output all the way around to the back of the power plants, and here we will merge them with all the other power plant outputs and send them to the left of the build to be recycled. Above these lines you will also run the water pipes. So for this build we will need a total of 1800 water per minute, that's 300 water per power plant and to make this easy what I've decided to do is build a single water extractor per nuclear power plant and I've then overclocked this to 250%. This provides us with the required 300 water per plant per minute and rather than combining water pipes into Mark IIs I've done all of these as separate Mark 1 pipes. This saves us from any water balancing complications that have been prominent in the update so far. Now we're going to run these pipes around the back and then feed each of them into a power plant. Remember depending on the build height that you may also need to use pumps for this. Next let's build the fuel rod manufacturers. We will place three manufacturers down, you can place these where you wish as there is ample space for this build, but if you're unsure you can place these three foundations deep in the bottom right hand cor corner of the grid. Make sure these outputs are merged together and from there you can either load balance or if you're not starved for power currently, manifold the fuel rods into the power plants. These manufacturers should all be set to 100% clock speed producing uranium fuel rods and you will need to input the 6 of the magnetic control rods and the 3.6 encased industrial beams into these along with the encased uranium cells which we shall now produce. 
The encased uranium cells will be produced in the blender. For this, we will need to place down three blenders across from the previous manufacturers. I have placed these two foundations deep into the grid with a small space in between the manufacturers to bust the encased uranium cells to the manufacturers. These should be set to 80% clock speed with sulfuric acid, uranium ore and concrete being fed into these. To ensure that we do not have any backflow problems, I've placed valves and limited the input lines to a total of 32 sulfuric acid each. At this point, we will also need to add an output for the excess sulfuric acid. These blenders will merge their sulfuric acid output and then send this all the way across to the left of the grid to go to the recycling section. And at this point, in theory, we could be running the six power plants but we would be storing all the nuclear waste and we would also have to deal with the excess sulfuric acid otherwise the whole factory line is going to saturate up. So let's deal with the waste now. To recycle the waste uranium we will need to place a blender with the inputs facing the bottom of the grid in the top left hand corner. At this point we will create a load balancer for the waste line creating a 3 to 1 ratio of waste heading to the blender. To do this, we'll place a splitter dividing into two lines. One will lead to a merger, and the second line will lead to another splitter, which will split one line into the same merger we've just placed, and the second line heading towards the bottom of the build. The merger will then feed the blender. Now this blender will be producing non-fissile uranium and will require 30 silica per minute as well as 18 nitric acid per minute. It will also require 18 sulfuric acid from the 24 waste sulfuric acids that we've just piped around. Now in order to do this, place a pipe junction and use gravity to create a priority split into the blender. The rest of the sulfuric acid will join up with the sulfuric acid main line leading to the blenders that produce the encased uranium cells. Make sure that there is a valve limiting the input of sulfuric acid before the junction set to 90 and a second valve leading to the main sulfuric acid line from the recycling blender set to 6. This will create a looped system. The recycling blender should now be set to 120% overclock. At this point, we have a water output line. Now, this can be used in any manufacturing that you require in your factory. Or should you wish, you can actually loop this to the nearest power plant and reduce the water coming from the water extractors. The non-fissile uranium, however, should then head to a particle accelerator that's set to 60% clock speed. The second input should be the excess waste that we were load balancing earlier on. Once the particle accelerator turns these resources into plutonium pellets, you can run them to an assembler set at 180% overclock. This will be combined with the 36 concrete per minute to produce encased plutonium cells, and these will then be outputted to our final production line. Now that we are producing encased plutonium cells, we can transport all of these to a manufacturer, which I've placed next to the assembler. Here we will also require the input of steel beams, electromagnetic control rods and heat sinks to produce a total of 0.3 plutonium fuel rods per minute. Now these can obviously be used as power, but I highly recommend sinking these rods in the awesome sink giving you an awesome amount of points and also no waste. So there you are guys, I will mention that this guide is just to show you the process and though you're more than welcome to copy the layout, knowing these steps should allow you to build this in your own style. That being said, if you do want me to show you ways in which I might be inclined to build these within a factory, then let me know in the comment section below and perhaps we'll do that next time. Also, if you do have any ideas as to what items you'd like me to produce on the next super efficient build guide, then do let me know in the comment section below as well. And guys, that's all we really have time for. So if you did find this helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you want to see more information on this particular build, remember to check out our website, satisfactorytips.com. I'll place the link 
below. But thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our amazing supporters who allow me to do this, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, The Calamity and Cerebral Tag and Treble, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now. <laughs>